Two teacups and Spency boys got that drank. What's up, my dudes? Boys, be sure and go DM me on Instagram at Spencer Turley, no spaces and no capital letters to get in my Discord. All you got to do is hit me up on Insta. Let me know you want to get in the Discord. I'll get you in there. I was in there playing MXM in uh, a voice channel like just a couple days ago. So if you want to be a part of that, be sure and DM me on Insta. Either way, we got the round three RF Supercross track right here. Spencey boy about to fly off the berm. Kind of funny. So this track right here is pretty much a prime example of what I've been so frustrated with with RF these past few years. There's no consistency to it anymore. One weekend, it'll be like this. The next weekend, the track will be something completely different like that. The weekend after that, they'll have a completely different outlook on what they're doing with the road. And the week after that, they'll totally change their pre-made because they're doing something different with the road. It's like, oh my God, man. You know, we're so past that point at this point with RF being on their 12th year doing this. For MX Simulator, we're way past the testing point. You know what I mean? We're way past the, let's go in here and fuck around with all these different potential track designs and then we'll come up with some good ones. We're past that, dog. Even with the erode in this game, we're way past the point of where you should be testing it, you know, and trying all these different settings. That That's what you had the last four years to do. That, that's what you were doing the last four years. So I'm very confused at how it seems like you're still doing that. You're still... It, it, just for instance, the whoop section right here. Okay, you finally build your whoops up pretty good. Why did you not do that in the first two rounds? Hello? Do you see what I'm saying? They, they waste so much time. They waste so many potentially good rounds, potentially good tracks. They literally just burned those first two tracks, those first two RF 2022 Supergraph tracks. You might as well throw those in the trash because they're pointless. They're terrible. There's no reason to ever go back and play those at all. You know, here you finally amp up your whoops a little bit. You finally... Make some of your jump rhythms a little bit more peaked. But again, here's my question. Why didn't you do that in the first two rounds? Why does it take you all this time to do this shit nowadays? You just go back and forth and smaller jumps and then bigger jumps and then smaller whoops and then official Monster Energy one difficulty to your tracks and then you amp everything up the next round and then you're going to do this same shit next year. And this is what I want to let people know right here. Do not forget... How shitty Anaheim 1 in Oakland was on these RF 2022 tracks because they will make a couple of decent tracks this year. They will do that. But you got to look at the overall season, the overall spectrum of everything they've done in a particular year. That's what I what I mean when I say like RF ain't making the tracks the same anymore. These tracks are shitty as fuck. Even over the past three or four years, you know, they've made a couple of decent tracks. That's not to get confused, you know. They have made a couple of okay tracks the past three or four years. I'm not saying every single RF track has been dog water. The problem is it's the mass majority of the tracks they've made the past three or four years have been just under par They've not even been to your baseline of skill gap and difficulty and replayability and all that kind of shit. And that's what I'm saying. They're repeating that same exact process. Like the Anaheim one and the Oakland track were ab absolute dog shit. The whoops had no skill gap. The jumps had no skill gap. Everything was a soft, sandy cloud. There was just no skill gap to it. But now they come in here round three and give you a little bit of skill gap to the track. Still don't think it's anywhere near where it should be, but they at least there's a little bit there. You know, these whoops, there's a little bit of something there. You know, the, the triple ends out of the corners, 
Um, like this rhythm right here, you kind of got to time it a little bit. You know, there's a little bit of timing involved. This section right here, you got to be on the gas to hook up over to this jump right here. And that sets you up to make go to the inside on this main supercross triple, which creates a little bit of skill gap because you got to be wide ass open on the 450 to be able to hit this triple from the inside like that, right? Then you got like a on the table off to triple right here. And then they made this triple just big enough to where you got to be on the gas. You know, you can't be you know, lollygagging, farting around in the corner and still hit this triple in like you could on the Anaheim one and Oakland triple ends. Well, uh, let me correct you. On the Oakland track, it wasn't even faster to go triple in. Do you see the difference? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, see right here? See if you was to just go double right here, this rhythm wouldn't actually be faster. It's actually faster to hit the triple in. Do you know what I mean? On that Oakland track, there was no rhythms that were faster to actually go triple in on. Do you see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. So, but it's like, why was that not figured out for the first two rounds? You just burnt the first two rounds for no reason. It's like, damn, man. But nonetheless, even though I say these whoops have a little bit of skill gap to them, they're still not really skill gap because of the tile map everything's softer now, right? This is something you boys need to understand about this. This is what makes all this so different is because they tried to make the traction, the dirt itself, softer to play into the erode of the game, the terrain deformation, because there's no actual cushion to the dirt itself because it's such an old game engine from 2007. So what they have to do is they got to go in there to the tile map the actual traction of the track and they have to adjust things on that to try to give you more of a softer feeling to play into that erode a road feeling of the game but what happens there is you you get slightly more of a softer feeling but you completely give up that original dirt feeling of of the track itself and so when you're going through a whoop section like this right here even though these whoops are decently quote unquote sized they're nowhere near as difficult as a whoop section of this size would have been back in 2017 with that kind of tile map, with that kind of dirt, because with that sort of dirt, it's not as soft as this, and every whoop you hit, it was more of an impact, right? It actually affected the bike so much more than this whoop section does right here. This is what I've been trying to explain to you boys. Even if they make these jumps big enough and these whoops, quote unquote, big enough, and these berms big enough, and they make everything terrain-wise big enough, like a 2017 track would have been, it's still not going to be as difficult because of this modern age, softer, sandy traction tile map that they use for a road in the game. It makes everything softer. All of your landings and your impacts and everything is so much more forgiving and softer and like you're on a cloud. And it just, it, it totally changes the physics of the bike whenever you make a dirt like this that's so different from the standard dirt feelings of the game. Do you know what I mean? The standard dirt feelings that we had all those years up to 2018, it's not just the traction that that affects, you know what I mean? It affects how soft the dirt actually feels, right? So like on a track like this, and, and on the Anaheim 1 and Oakland track, when you're going through the whoops, it feels more like you're going through a set of sand whoops than you're going through actual hardcore dirt whoops. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you're hitting the jump rhythms, it feels more like you're hitting sand jumps than actually landing and impacting on full-blown dirt jumps. Do you know what I mean? That makes so much of a difference, but so many people can't understand that because... RF has slowly worked this feeling into it over these past three or four years. That's what's got a lot of you boys tricked up. They didn't just do this shit overnight, right? Gotta love Spency Boy falling down on the single right there. I rode like 10 laps on this track. I mean, this track did have more replayability to it than the Anaheim 1 and the Oakland track for me. It did have more replayability to it. It just seemed like there was more... You had to think a little bit more on this track to be able to hit everything. You couldn't just go around it, you know, with your head in the clouds. Um, 
you know, that's how I felt on those first two tracks this year. It's like my brain could just instantly go into autopilot, literally the first lap on the track, and just hit everything and hit every whoop section and go around it without even having to think. This track, it requires a little bit of thinking. I'm not going to say it requires a lot, but you got to think a little bit. You know, at least there's a little bit there. Um, that's how you know, at least at my skill level on, on MX Sim and how many tracks I've rode on in this game and how, how long I've played this game, I can pretty much instantly tell when I get on a track whether or not it's got the proper amount of skill gap, jump scaling, whoop scaling, you know, separators, stuff like that. Um... This is what I would call like in between like a like those first two rounds and like a 2017 track. It's like in between that sort of difficulty and skill gap, right? Um, but nonetheless, man, at the end of the day, it still is a softer, sandy vibe feeling. And that that's one of those workarounds. They've had to do so many workarounds in this game to try to get the erode, you know, 1% better right? They've had to do so many workarounds because this game was never even intended to have a terrain deformation system because it was a game engine made back in 2007. So just like the creator of the game has said himself, JLV, there's so many workarounds you have to do for it that you actually end up taking away from other elements of the game to try to make the erode just a little bit better. Uh, case in point here, this new age of this higher friction, sandy, softer tile map they're using, traction, dirt filling they're using, it makes the erode, you know, a half a percent better, but then you give up that original dirt feeling, that actual impact dirt traction, proper traction, not super, super high friction, you give up all those original solid dirt feelings that you used to have just to make the erode half a percent better. I don't I don't think that's a proper payoff. I just don't. I think you'd be better off going in there using more so of attraction like you had back in 2017, going in there and making multiple different versions of tracks, okay? So you still have your dirt feeling, you got some inside pre-made ruts and then you just run the most micro micro amount of a road that you can possibly imagine. I think that would be 10 times better than trying to rely on the road to go from a perfectly flat, smoothed off sand track and then just expect the road to do everything. That's what RF is doing at this point. They're expecting the road to just make the entire track for you, basically. That's why your jump rhythms haven't been as difficult. That's why the whoops haven't been as difficult. Because RF thinks that your skill gap on the track comes entirely from the erode, which is not how a supercross track should be. Your skill gap should come from your obstacles first and foremost, and then the erode should just add on top of it to add even more skill gap. But it's, a, it's as if RF almost tries to handicap the track itself before you even get any road on it to try to make up for the the extra skill gap that you're going to have with the road on the track so they try to make the the base version of the terrain on the track easier so that it's not as hard when you get the terrain deformation on top of it but that's not how you should be doing it do you understand what i'm saying because then that kills the feeling of the track in single player. All the people that are playing with just three or four of their buddies, you know, the 99% of the population in this game that's not going to experience a road with 22 dudes on the gate with the perfect a road setting, you know, the 99% the of the population that plays this game that will never experience the track like that, you know, you probably don't want to put all your eggs in that one basket like that. And that feels to me like what they've done with a road in this game. They put all their eggs in that basket. They'll sacrifice anything for it. They'll change anything for it. They'll do anything for it, you know. And that's what's caused the absolute ruckus these past three or four years in this game. But, you know, I mean, yeah, this track definitely takes more engagement, takes more thinking, takes more movement. Takes more, you know, you got to actually think about what you're doing on the bike on a track like this. 
It's not so mind-numbingly easy. But again, why did we even have to go through that in the first two rounds? See, they do this every year, guys. They'll go in there. They'll make three or four, two or three absolutely horrendously bad tracks, right? Then they'll go in there and make a couple of decent ones, but it makes them seem so much better because they've been making so shitty tracks the whole time that those two halfway decent ones seem like they're legendary, right? Whereas like back in 2017, you'd have damn near every single one of the tracks in the series was awesome on point skill gap, separating whoops, obstacle difficulty, you know, skill gap, quad lines, separating lines to hit. But then you'd have like one or two halfway shitty ones like back in that 2017 series, you know, there is one or two tracks that are halfway shitty, but nowadays it's as if almost the entire series is shitty, but they'll have one or two decent tracks, right? It's like you flip-flopped it from the 2017 days. So, but nonetheless, it's just like, what? If you were capable of this, then what the fuck were you doing at Anaheim 1 in Oakland? I mean, what? What the hell? What'd you do? Change track makers? I mean, what? You know what I mean? It's just like, they waste so many valuable opportunities and potentially great tracks that you could have had in this game. But now what's going to happen is when you go back and you ride like on an online server that's running all of the 2022 tracks in this game, you're going to have to go in there and ride on the shitty Anaheim one, the shitty Oakland track, every time you go through that series, just to be able to ride on a couple of the decent ones that they, they will inevitably potentially make, you know, in the, in the 2022 series, just like they did last year, just like they did the year before. They'll make a couple of decent ones, but then the rest of them are complete dog shit, nowhere near to the skill gap level they should be. Boy, I'm speaking too much truth on this shit. Damn, dog. <laughs> uh, man, oh man. But even still, even though I say this track takes a little bit of thinking and a little bit of thought and a little bit of, you know, effort to get around it, it still doesn't really have separating lines on it. I mean, you could still hit all this shit on a 250. I still think you can hit this triple in right here on a 250. Um, you're not really going to be able to hit this quad right here into this corner. That would have been a hittable line back in 2017, right? It's like whatever kind of potential quad lines they make on a track... It's like they get the, di nowadays they get the distance of it just far enough to where it's like you might be able to hit it one time in qualifying or some dumb shit, but you're not going to hit it in the main event. You know, I guess technically this is a quad over here, but you're kind of jumping off of a tabletop, so it's not really, but, um, but I still feel like you could hit that on a 250. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like there's anything on this track. You know, when I was just made that video on those 2017 tracks, I really just don't believe... This triple right here is pretty solid, especially when you hit it from the inside, this main Supercross triple. She's pretty solid. But again, why was your other two tracks not like that? I don't know. But like I was saying on those 2017 tracks, they're, back in the 2017 days, there was always at least three or four different obstacles or rhythms or whatever that you could hit felt like you could only hit that on a 450. Nowadays, it feels like everything you're hitting on a 450, you could hit it on a 250 as well. You know, that they've totally lost that separation between the 250 and the 450 class as far as obstacles and the way you can hit certain things. That's just non-existent nowadays. Even though this track is better than the first and second round as far as skill gap, difficulty, and thinking, it's still not like you're hitting something that's a 450-only style line. I just still feel like you're not really hitting something like that. You know what I mean? But nonetheless, man, that's about it for this one. <sighs> just... Just frustrating that we have to go through so many of the so many of these inconsistent back and forth. Let's try this. Let's try that. It's just so annoying at this point. It's so frustrating at this point. 
And to some of you guys that haven't experienced seeing RF do that from 2018 to 2019 to 2020 to 21, you really, and continuing to do it into 22, you really don't understand the pattern of what they've done. You know, a lot of you boys, you just, you're just starting to get into this pro racing. You do, you do not understand the repetitive history of RF. You don't understand the patterns of this shit. And that's why I'm so done with this shit, because I just know they're going to come around next year and repeat all the same mistakes that they made in the first and second round of this year. Even the, even if they make a couple of decent ones, just like they did last year in 2021, they made a couple of decent tracks, but it gets completely drowned out by all of the other shitty tracks that were made in that particular year. Do you understand what I'm saying? So nonetheless... That's it for this one, boys. See you guys on that next one. Later, dudes.